For this video review, we're going to take a look at NECA Dungeons & Dragons Strongheart Ultimate Action Figure. Let us first do a quick 360 view of the box packaging. So what comes with your Strongheart Action Figure? A shield, alternate set of hands, a hammer, a dagger, a broadsword, and broadsword shift. Just at the top of his helmet or the beginning of his plume, this Strongheart action figure stands around the 7.5 inch mark. Your standard McFarlane DC Multiverse action figure, um, as to height, it's a 7 inch figure. Your standard G.I. Joe Classified Series action figure is a 6.25 inch tall action figure. Here's a 360 view of the action figure without any of its accessories. Okay, so let us first take a look at the accessories or the weapons and the shield. Okay, so let's start with the shield. The shield, this is the front, this is the back, the top, and the side. So it's made of not rubbery plastic but hard plastic so it's tended to mimic the real thing wherein the real thing has a steel front with a wooden back lay or underlay okay so the straps those are soft rubbery plastic and take a look at the opening so one is going to be a bigger opening, the other one is going to be a smaller opening. So this is intended to go over the forearm, that is not intended to go over the forearm. That is intended for the handset, that's uh, intended to hold on to the shield. So get the appropriate handset first, att attach it to the shield before you insert the shield and the handset and to the left forearm of the action figure okay so that is how this thing is supposed to work okay so we have the war hammer with a hand retention system which is made of soft rubbery plastic so we have an opening and you could put the handset in first or the forearm in first and then the handset and then attach the handsets or you could just directly um, put it into the handset of the action figure so this is the details next thing is going to be the main weapon which is the broadsword and the dagger the dagger is already integrally um, incorporated onto the broadsword shift so that is the details of the broadsword the shift i mean so this is the details of the sword the handle and the shift To insert the sheath onto the side of the action figure, take the sword out first, take the action figure, and insert that in this way. And just let it hang like that. So don't make the mistake of <laughs> jamming it in that way because you're going to damage the strap. Okay, so let's take a look at the dagger. So that is how it is placed. And that is the details of the dagger. So it easily rides or shifts onto the scabbard. Oops. So, come on. so with the broadsword. Okay, so let's discuss handsets. So we have three pairs on the review table. The one that is attached to the action figure, they are fists. So it's just natural for you to really pick the handset that 
fits you well for the intended purpose of either play or display okay so handset number one is going to be your best candidate wherein this has wider opening for holding on to the shield strap and the broad sword and even the hammer but these handsets are not going to hold on to the dagger very well. These handsets, the second handsets will do because I already tried. So this has a narrower opening but with regards to slipping the hammer and the broadsword on these handsets, you're going to have a res uh, resistance and the risk of damaging the paint on your weapons and the third handset is supposed to be just for show or possibly you could use this for holding on to the shield if you wish to so it's easier to put on or take off so the combination well this is going to be useless because you would need a accessory or a weapon holding hand which this doesn't provide so naturally it's going to be this combination and this okay so we already did an exchange of handsets so for we picked one from the handset that we wish to use so the one with the wider opening and the one that is open so this is going to hold on to the shield shield side or protective side weapon side right side okay so you have your shield and with this type of handset it's just easy to do this thing wherein you're just going to slip that shield onto the forearm and you don't run the risk of ripping off the materials and actually it's going to stay in place so if you're just uh, your intention is just for display this is going to be already a good option now the one that's with a bigger opening that's going to hold on to the sword so let's take that shield off and this is how it looks with the sword sheath and the dagger so slip it in first that way by taking off the broadsword of the sword sheath and opening in first and do an angle and it's going to stay in place so it's going to look like that and you could either just do this this and since you have um, armor overlay on the forearm it's going to grab onto the soft rubbery material of the shield okay and let's take the hammer and just make a opening like that and just insert the hammer onto the hand that way and that's a nice proper fit visor down and let's make a very simple neutral action pose for the views this is how the action figure looks without the war hammer just the broadsword and the shield so let us do a 360 view and we're ready to discuss articulation points and take a closer look at the 
really fine details of the figure. So as for details, let us first start with the head unit or the head scalp. So for the head articulation points, so the head is on a ball joint. So ample articulation points, decent looking up, but as you could see, not so much. Looking down, well, there's a little bit more lo with looking down motion, but with looking up. Um, yeah, okay, so that's it. So side to side motion for the head and a little bit of rocking motion. So the head is also, the neck is on a ball joint, so onto the shoulder line of the figure. For the body, we have a ball on the diaphragm and a ball on the waistline, so which provides a really wide range of motion. So the suction figure, once you take it out of packaging, at first I was afraid that the neck occurs that I could possibly break a part of the action figure, especially the arms. So I was very careful with regards to articulating this action figure. I had a my hair dryer, trusty hair dryer on hand to really soften up or loosen up the articulation point that is not cooperative. But I was surprised that out of packaging the joints are good to go okay so fine articulation point for the body for the forearm uh, the the arm i mean this shoulder armor it's connected to some uh, somewhere or possibly underneath the this thing what do we call this shoulder armor anyway okay so actually when you articulate the arm it's not going to rotate to this piece so i also tried that on the other forearm which um, i made the conclusion that this rubbery armor piece is connected to this shoulder protector okay so full 360 there's going to be of course a limit because of this but range of motion with regards to articulation points or poses that you wish to uh, do decent very decent okay so T poses very possible we also have a cut on the bicep for rotation of the bicep a single point of articulation on the arm and we have rota uh, rotating function for that arm we also have rotating function for the forearm protectors or armor also have rotation on the hand and of course each hand would have its hinge now moving towards the legs so these armor pieces or cad protectors <laughs> they're made of soft rubbery plastic so it's going to allow articulation point of the leg and the leg we also have rotation on the on this section of the thigh of the thigh we also have rotation on the boot and rotation on this section but yes so two points of bend for the knee and that is how the knee looks bended and the knee guard actually also has this function the boot 
has a hinge and pivot so articulation point this figure is not short of it so let's take a look at the back details so let's start first with the cape the cape is two-sided material actually I could still feel something in between and I already did a light test as you could see there's something in between those two materials that light really does not pass through much but as you could see you could still see the beam of the flashlight but there's a third material sand sandwich in between these two which makes it um, quite thick to the touch we have a little bit of soft wiring on the sides of the cape which allows for flexing of the cape but it really does not hold onto poses very well it's intended to the wire i think is intended just to keep the cape in shape that the cape isn't going to curl up because if it doesn't have the wire then it's made of softer material and even if it's um, three materials sewn together it's still without that wire it's still going to curl over and it's not going to look good so I guess the intention of that wiring is to somehow um, just a little bit of uh, keeping the cape in shape but there are more details onto the back so we still have those chains but they are of enough length that when you articulate the action figure those chain uh, those plastic materials are not going to stress out this area too of the helmet the plume or the accessory is on a looks like a ball joint yeah it's a ball joint okay and as for the head cover you could move it down and cover the entire face of the action figure so we have a slit for the eye and slit for the mouth and the nose so he isn't um, constricted with regards to breathing through that helmet <laughs> Okay, but protected enough from blows of shields, but not from arrows. <laughs> okay, so great looking action figure with enough or ample articulation points. Details are great. Paint job is superb. With regards to price, well, uh, if you see this on retail at possibly 37 still not bad actually. But um, I got this on eBay when they had a spring sale and I still had credits. So I was able to get this guy for less than $37. I actually got it for 25 because of the credits. So at first it was sale and I also applied my credits. So I got this guy for lower a price. Now the only thing that I don't like with this action figure is going to be the art the arms because it just won't really stay as parallel to the body. It's going to be at that angle so I tried to really pinch it sideways some more I thought it was just a um, articulation issue on this section but yeah it's how it is engineered <laughs> so I'm not going to stress about that so that's the only thing that I have a quite a little gripe on this action figure but overall really happy with the purchase so 
if you like this review like comment and subscribe to help me grow my channel and see you on the next action figure or custom action figure review